Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is identifying opposites and absolute values of rational numbers. This is uh, lesson 3.2 in module 3, lesson 2. So anyway, uh, here's our question. is How can we identify opposites and absolute values of rational numbers? Okay, so here we go. So positive and negative rational numbers. So water levels with respect to sea level, which has an elevation of 0. I didn't know that for a long time. Uh, that the elevation at sea level, I know some of you guys are thinking, well, duh. Anyways, but sea level has elevation of zero, and it may be measured at the beach tidal basin. So water levels below sea level are represented by negative numbers. Okay, so so here we go. The, the table shows the water level at some tide pools at different times as the tide goes in and out. Okay, so... So at 4 a.m. it looks like there was a high tide at 3.5 feet, okay, above sea level, and then at 8 a.m. it started going down to 2.5 feet, and then at noon it was down below sea level at uh, negative 0.5 feet, and then at 4 p.m. it was uh, down below sea level at uh, negative 2.5 feet, and then it uh, started coming back in at uh, at a little bit above sea level, 0 0.5 feet right there, okay. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take those tables and graph uh, the level uh, graph the level for each time on the number line okay so here's uh, a we're going to go to 3.5 so over here between 3 and 4 halfway between 3 and 4 so there would be a right there okay and then b is at 2.5 so halfway between 2 and 3 so there would be b right there okay and then negative 0.5 okay so here's 0 so here's negative 1 so it's going to be halfway between negative 1 and and 0 right there so there's c right there negative 2.5 here's negative 2 here's negative 3 so negative 2.5 is going to be halfway in between there and then finally 0.5 is going to be right about there between 0 and 1. Okay, easy enough. Okay, so we'll slide that up and answer a few questions here. How do we uh, know where to graph negative 0.5? Okay, well, negative 0.5 was halfway between negative 1 and 0 right there. Okay, so at what time or times is the level closest to sea level? Okay, so here it was closest to sea level, because sea level is at zero right there. So closest to sea level is at point C, so noon, that would have been 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And then point E, which would have been at 8 o'clock at night right there. Okay, so at 8 p.m. or noon, they're each uh, 0.5 units away from zero, or 5 feet away from zero. Which point is located halfway between negative 3 and negative 2? Okay, here's negative 3, here's negative 2 so negative 2.5 that was point D right there okay and then uh, which point is the same distance uh, from 0 as point D okay so point D is 2.5 away from 0 and it looks like point B is also 2.5 away from 0 so point B right there okay so how would we graph negative 2.25 and would it be to the left or to the right of point D okay so there's point D right there there's negative 2.5 Negative 2.25 is going to be right there. It's going to be halfway between point D and negative 2. Okay, and so it's going to be uh, to the right of point D, just a little bit to the right right there. Okay, all right, rational numbers and opposites on a number line, we can, we can find the, uh, the opposites of a rational number that are not integers the same way we found opposites of integers they're just the same distance from zero on a number line so here's negative two two and three fourths right here here's positive two and three fourths so these guys are the same distance away because they're both two and three fourths away from zero so they are opposites okay one has a negative one has a positive okay all right, so um, until, uh, here's an example of a word problem here. Until June of 1997, the New York Stock Exchange priced to the value of share of stocks in eights. Okay, so for example, uh, $27 and one eighth, or $41 and three fourths. Three fourths is a fraction of an eighth right there. Uh, one fourth is, a, is twice as big as one eighth right there, so it's a fraction of an eighth. All right, so. Uh, the change in value of share of stock from day to day was also represented in eights as positive or negative numbers. So, so here this table uh, shows the change in value of stocks over two days, okay, from Tuesday to Wednesday. So we're going to graph the change in stock values for Wednesday. So we're going to graph this uh, number right here and it's opposite on the number line. All right, let's move that up right there. All right, so let's first uh, graph um, Wednesday's stock number. So that's at negative 4 
and 1 fourth. So it's between negative 4 and negative 5. It's not quite to negative 4.5, so there are negative 4.5, so there's negative 4 and a fourth right there. So it's a little bit closer to negative 4 right there. And then so the opposite, you guys, is going to be at positive 4 and a fourth. So just make sure, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Just make sure that we go the same distance. This is 4 and a fourth down, so just go 4 and a fourth up. So this is going to lead us into the absolute values, okay? So what are the opposites of these numbers? So the opposite of 7 is negative 7. And the opposite of negative 3.5 is positive 3.5. Finally, negative 2.5 and negative 9 and 1 third, okay? All right, so absolute values of rational numbers. We can find the absolute values of rational numbers uh, that are not integers the same way we found the absolute values of our integers. So we did that in the, uh, right before this lesson. So the absolute value of a rational number is just the number's distance from zero on a number line right there. Okay, so here the table shows the average low temperature in January for one location during, five, uh, during a five-year span. So in 2008, in January, it was at negative 3.2. 2009, it was negative 5.4. And then here's the numbers for 2010, 11, and 12. So find the absolute value of the average January low temperature. All right, so let's go ahead and graph uh, 2009 temperature. So the 2009 temperature was at negative 5.4, so let's graph that. It is 5.4 below zero, so not quite at 5.5, it's a little bit uh, farther up than 5.5, so 5.4 would be right about there, okay? So graph a point, there should be a T there, not a G. Graph a point, let me change that. I, I send these lessons to uh, my other teachers in my district right there. All right, so then um, find the absolute value of negative 5.4. So the absolute value of negative 5.4 is positive 5.4. Remember, absolute value in the last lesson we talked about, they're called negative choppers, you guys. So, so the absolute value of negative 5.4 is just 5.4. It's just what's the distance it is away from zero on a number line right there. Okay, so let's graph each number on the number line, then use the number line to find the absolute value, which just means find the distance. So we're going to graph this distance right here. Remember, absolute value just chops off that negative. So the absolute value of negative 4.5 is just 4.5. But it also is asking us to graph that. So negative 4.5, we're going to graph it right there. There's negative 4.5. And the absolute value of that is positive 4.5. Okay, one and a half. Here's one and a half. We'll graph it right there. How far is it away from zero? One and a half. So that's what uh, absolute value means, uh, how far it is away from zero. Absolute value of four is four, and the absolute value of negative three and one-fourth is positive three and one-fourth. And there's, there's negative three right there. There's negative four, so there's negative three and a half, so there's negative three and a fourth right there, okay? All right, so you guys, I hope that made sense, and take care.